We learnt in the last lesson that for a defined benefit plan, the promised benefit is a contractual regular amount an employer promises to provide its employee in the future after his retirement. Presently, the employer is responsible to make the appropriate contributions and investment decisions to ensure that there is sufficient pension assets to pay out the earned benefits when they are due. The estimated amount of earned benefits that the employer is responsible to provide for, discounted to its present value, is known as the pension obligation which is the focus of this lesson. Let's learn how to estimate this. Now let's go with a simple example of a small company with just one employee who has worked for one year and his starting salary for the year was $100,000. Under the company's defined benefit plan, he's promised an annual end-of-year payment of 1% of his final salary for each year of service, all the way until his death. Now, if you're the employer, you may have a hard time determining what's the amount you should put into the trust fund today to make sure the fund has the means to pay the promised benefits. You don't know when he will retire, how many years he will live, and his final salary before retirement. Moreover, you're not sure of the discount rate you should apply. All you can do now is to make estimates. So, let's say you estimate that Jason will work for another 15 years until he retires, and that he'll live for 10 years after retirement. His salary is likely to grow by 3% each year, and the discount rate is 7% per year. So, based on his starting salary of $100,000, he'll have a final salary of $155,797 when he retires. Based on the formula for the benefit plan, he has earned, in his first year of work, a benefit of $1,558 for each year in retirement for 10 years until death. Now, what we're interested in is how much should be in the trust fund to be able to provide these cash flows for the next 10 years. I hope you still remember the time value of money calculations. We want to calculate the PV at this point. Number of periods is 10 and the interest per year will assume at the 7% discount rate. PMT is the annual payment. Future value is zero as we expect no more payments at the end of 10 years. Punch all these into your TVM calculator and we get a present value of $10,943. As this amount is only required 15 years from now, we want to discount it back to today by the same discount rate of 7%. This works out to $3,966. So the employer should have this amount in the trust fund to provide for the pension that Jason has earned in his first year. We term this the pension obligation, which by definition is the present value of future benefits earned by employees for service provided to date. Under IFRS, this is termed present value of the defined benefit obligation and projected benefit obligation under US GAAP. For the rest of this video, we shall refer to this as PBO, but you should be aware of the different ways of naming it. Let's say the employer puts in this amount into the trust fund and the employee worked a second year, so he's earned more retirement benefit. Assuming there's no change in assumptions and the terms of the plan, can you calculate the amount that should be added to the PBO to cater for his second year of service? Pause the video now and work out your answer. And we're back. Since the assumptions and pension formula have not changed, the addition to his retirement benefit should be the same as the first year, which means the amount of earned benefit added at retirement is also the same. This time, we discount the amount by 14 years instead, so the present value is $4,244. We add this to the PBO. This is termed the current service cost, which is defined as the present value of benefits earned by the employees during the current period. However, there is also one more component that's added to the PBO, and that is interest cost which is the increase in pension obligation due to the passage of time. Recall we use the rate of 7% to discount earned benefit to its present value. Since one year has passed, we have to add on 7% to the beginning PBO. The interest cost is therefore calculated as the beginning PBO 
times the discount rate. Add this all up to the beginning PBO, we get an ending PBO of $8,488. This is the pension obligation of the firm at this point, which is the end of the second year of the employee's service. To verify, project this amount 14 years in the future to the employee's retirement, and we find that this is roughly equivalent to the amount needed at his retirement, the difference due to rounding errors. Thus far, we've been working on the premise that the assumptions have not changed and that the pension formula has not been amended. Now, let's say for this period the assumption has changed, such that Jason is projected to live for 12 years after retirement. Such a change will definitely affect the pension obligation of the employer and is recorded as actuarial gains and losses due to changes in assumptions. Another change that can affect the pension obligation is when the terms of the pension plan are amended. For instance, if the pension formula has been changed such that the promised benefit is increased to 1.5% of the final salary, this means that all the service costs calculated in the past are likely insufficient. The adjustment to PBO is recorded as past or prior service costs. Now, what we've illustrated is a simple example for a one-employee company. In reality, this can be extended to larger companies with a diverse workforce of different ages. We need to make actuarial assumptions on variables such as mortality, employee turnover, salary growth rate, retirement age, and discount rate. And as older workers retire and start collecting benefits, the actual benefits paid to them will reduce the pension obligations for the company. And there, we've reached this important relationship to calculate the change in PBO for the current period. The ending pension obligation is the beginning obligation, plus the current service cost, plus interest cost, plus or minus the actuarial gains and losses, plus past service cost, minus any actual benefits paid. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.